I'm a 10 year old cutout of MatPat at a gaming convention. I can't be a part of a style channel unless I make myself more beautiful. <gasps> I know, a filter. Symmetrical, huh? Time to show the team my new look. Oh, oh my god, god get away. my god! Get away. Get away. Be gone, oh, demon! Horrifying. Be gone! Hey, what's with all the- No, oh, my god! <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, the show that's not afraid to look at the hard truth that's staring back in the mirror. So I was scrolling on the old TikTok a few weeks ago looking for terrible cooking ideas to test over on food theory. It's a fairly typical activity for me, but every other video was this face-flipping filter. It's eye-catching because it's unsettling. The filter cuts your face vertically down the middle and then flips it to show you what you'd look like if you had a perfectly symmetrical face. There are even filters built in to pick out my good side versus my bad side. There's ones that show me how other people see me, and if I'm still able to recognize myself, well then it means my face is apparently symmetrical. The people that you see doing these are usually showing off their extremely symmetrical faces. Hashtag humble bragging to the world because the filter says that the more symmetrical you are, the more scientifically attractive you are. Literally dozens of filters and thousands of videos all designed to show me how asymmetrical I obviously must be, and then of course hundreds of other videos to tell me how to fix my hideously asymmetrical face, mostly with a lot of groping and lifting of my own cheeks, like I'm needing a bunch of taffy over here. Just massage your face upward like this. That with the right highlight and contour, I can fix my quote unquote flaws. They're happy to judge me for chewing the wrong way or sleeping on my side and make sure I know that in order to be attractive, I have to evenly distribute the food in my mouth and only sleep on my back. The internet truly is a wonder. This idea of symmetry equals beauty is everywhere right now. There are literally thousands out there using models, Kardashians, or general gorgeous individuals whose faces don't wiggle very much when you flip them over a midline. But where did this idea come from? And does science actually support the idea that symmetrical is beautiful? Is the filter actually true, or is TikTok filtering the message to get us to hop on a trend designed to make us all feel a little less perfect? To start answering the question, we need to go way back, like hundreds if not thousands of years back. Human facial recognition is one of the most complex pieces of processing that our brain does, and it starts from the very moment that we're born. Babies at a few weeks old have been scientifically shown to preference familiar faces and more attractive faces. So recognizing and reading facial patterns isn't just important for finding us a date in high school, it is literally our key to survival. So let's start with the basic psychology of symmetry, shall we? In general, symmetrical objects are neurologically easier for your brain to process, as in it takes less effort for your brain to understand and categorize. This is called perceptual bias, and it happens because when your brain looks at something symmetrical, it honestly only has to comprehend half of it. It is literally doing almost half the work. The easier an object is to categorize for your brain, the more your brain tends to like it, because we're all slacking off in whatever way we can. On the other hand, an asymmetrical object presents more of a problem for your brain because it's harder to categorize, understand, and use. Instead of being comforting, it's telling your brain that it's strange or scary. Starfish, architecture, and gardens all use the idea that symmetry is easy and soothing for your brain. On the other hand, asymmetrical monsters, pirates with eye patches, or even faces with scars are all associated with being unnerving and scary. So does this idea apply to facial symmetry and whether we think someone's good looking. I mean, we've been seeing it recently a lot on TikTok, but I feel like this was an idea floating around in beauty magazines for a long time. And the short answer here is kind of yes. If you've taken anthropology, 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 you may have stumbled across the evolutionary advantage theory, which tells us that people prefer looking at symmetrical faces because they're viewed as genetically superior. The idea here is that if a person's face is asymmetrical, that may mean there's something wrong with them, meaning that they wouldn't be as good of a choice for procreation. As simple and neat as the theory is though, there are some issues with bringing it out of the stone age and into the modern day. There are certainly a few cases where you can see this logically working. In prehistoric times, if someone was missing an eye or an ear, or if they'd been maimed on one side of their face by an animal or left scarred by a disease, well then yeah, our ancestors would have recognized that person as less fit or able to survive in the wild. That person, for better or worse, would lose out on finding a partner and procreating because their lack of symmetry was perceived as a genetic or survival defect. But the thing is, most of us aren't getting mauled by bears these days. And even though I had seriously bad acne in high school, the average individual isn't dealing with major body trauma in their lifetime. 
At least, I hope so. Meaning that survival and being symmetrical aren't really related in modern society. On top of that, the trend that we see on TikTok isn't about major asymmetry, it's about the fact that one of your eyebrows is like four millimeters longer than the other, one nostril is slightly bigger, or your eyes aren't exactly the same angle. The result here is that we've taken a concept that was meant to be an evolutionary theory from way, way back, and we've turned it into a kind of judgment machine for totally normal people here in modern times. My hairline is so weird. My pores are huge. My nail beds suck. Why is a theory about evolution turned into a way of measuring tiny differences in people's faces? Well, that one's easy. Money. Plastic surgeons, Cosmo magazines, makeup companies and tutorials, all of them lashed onto this idea over a decade ago, primarily as a way to sell products, services, and procedures to clients who aren't symmetrical down to the millimeter and are therefore defective. By pointing out differences most people aren't consciously aware of, companies are now able to make people feel self-conscious enough about their appearance to get a nose job, a brow lift, a little Botox, and buy makeup to shape their face into a god of symmetry. The result, unsurprisingly, is that an obsession with correcting a totally normal face to make it perfect isn't doing great things for people. After publishing their article about how to make your face more symmetrical, Cosmo then published a follow-up article about how the TikTok filter is destroying self-esteem, going so far as to speculate that it's contributing to body dysmorphia in teenagers. Huh, you think? Looking through comments on TikTok, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that half the viewers are worshipping the revered symmetrical ones and half are feeling incredibly down about their self-image. So it seems like applying evolutionary advantage theory to people's normal faces isn't helping anyone except big Botox. Except we decided to take it a step further and show that none of it is even statistically accurate. I'm here to tell you that just making someone's face more symmetrical does not make them more attractive. And I have the data to back it up. Don't believe me? Well, just ask yourself. It turns out that you, you, the very likely viewers of this very episode, have been the ones that have helped me reach this conclusion. That's right. About six weeks ago, over on little old GT Live, our gaming-filled talk show, I posted a poll asking you to rate the attractiveness of various people's faces from very attractive to, yeah, not for me. <gasps> yep, it was for this very episode. See, dropping hints for style theory right under your noses. And hey, if you want to be a part of future episodes or polls or surveys like this, take a second to subscribe right now. We're going to be doing a lot more surveys and polls like this on this channel, both during end cards and on the community tab. So subscribe and make sure you get notified so you too can potentially be featured in upcoming videos. Anyway, here's how this particular poll worked. In the questions, we showed each participant a series of faces, including stock image faces as well as faces flipped across the midline by our pro theorist editors in Photoshop to ensure that they were perfectly symmetrical. We then randomized all the faces and 40,000 of you gave your responses in just one weekend, which means that we now have the definitive data about whether symmetrical faces really rate as more attractive. From the data, we learned three major things from this poll. First, that you all were showing your own perceptual bias as theorists. See, we added our own natural and symmetrical faces into the mix as way to try and even the playing field, so to speak. However, you flatterers decided to mark us all super high on the attractiveness scale. And while I'm certainly aware that we are a cute bunch, I know we're not that cute. Case in point, Dan. Obviously, I'm joking, but it did mean that we had to throw our own data out. The second thing was that all of you were brutal judges of everyone else's faces. Like, absolutely heartless, each and every one of you. But most importantly, the third thing we learned was that striving for symmetry isn't just striving for an impossible beauty standard, it's striving for a standard that doesn't relate to higher attractiveness scores. You guys were not interested in symmetrical faces. In fact, on average, the faces that were perfectly symmetrical, which spanned across ages, races, and genders, all scored 20% lower than unflipped stock image faces. Also, I know I said I was tossing the theorist team data, but I do have to point out that you all hated my symmetrical face. It scored over three points lower than my regular face. It's okay, symmetrical map pack can't hurt you. The point is that when asked about the level of attractiveness across dozens of faces with absolutely no knowledge of why you were being asked, tens of thousands of you ranked those terrible, disfigured, asymmetrical images as the more attractive options. Why? Because they're not terrible or disfigured, they're just normal. And this wasn't just you being nice either. Like I said, you went hard on all these faces and I'm thankful for it. But I got comments like this one. I didn't like most of them. Mostly rated them 1 to 4 and rated MatPat as a 10 as a joke. He's more like a 5. So if a survey of 40,000 people all said that symmetry doesn't mean more attractive, then what the heck does make someone rate more highly? Well, it turns out what TikTok isn't telling you is that there are way more ways to measure the proportions of a human face than whether it's just symmetrical. Symmetry is 
is actually boring next to the real ways of measuring out the perfect human face. Ways that are much more accurate and backed by centuries of science and art. For old school creators in the ancient pre-TikTok times, there have been two main rules that artists, graphic designers, and even sculptors have used for carving up the face, both vertically and horizontally to generate that ideal proportion. The first is the rule of fifths, meant to help you divide the face into five equal vertical strips like fruit roll-ups made out of your skin. Many of the beauty analysis tools on the internet actually use this rule to determine if your eyes are too far apart, if your nose is crooked, or if your ears stick out too much to be considered beautiful based on math. The fifths that matter the most are these middle three right here. Outer eye to inner eye, distance across the nose, and then inner eye to outer eye again. If these distances are equal, then your face is considered symmetrical, because both eyes are the same width and they're positioned equally from your face's midline. It also means that you don't have a nose that goes quote unquote out of bounds, which for white westernized faces has historically been considered beautiful. There is a lot to unpack there that I'm just not qualified for, but just know it's not good and it's a whole other reason that these standards are very outdated. In the name of science though, we're just gonna keep going, but keep that in the back of your head. The second rule is the rule of thirds, which is even easier. In this one, a person's face is chopped horizontally, where the top third starts at your hairline and goes down to your brow bone. The next third goes from your brow bone to your subnasally, the fancy way of saying the bottom of your nose, and the last third goes from your subnasally to the very bottom of your chin, also called your menton. Those are the parts of the body they don't tend to teach you in kindergarten. All right, class, touch your ear, touch your head, touch your menton. These lines are meant to help distinguish the right proportions for the larger areas of your face, like your forehead or your chin. When you perceive someone as having a weak chin or when you see caricatures of people with huge foreheads, the reason it stands out is because mathematically their face isn't obeying the rule of thirds. There are also plenty of ways to cheat this rule, like making a big forehead appear smaller by using bangs to bring your hairline down. This is also one of those places where Instagram Photoshop tools get a lot of mileage, with people making their chins slightly shorter to avoid having a dream face reveal moment of their very own. So with these two rules in mind, we went back to our survey results to check on a few things. Since we already knew that symmetry wasn't the be-all end-all for determining attractiveness in our survey faces, we tried these other rules instead. First, we looked at some of the highest ranking faces. In this one, you can already tell that her face isn't symmetrical just by looking at it. One side of her nose is larger than the other, her smile isn't straight, her teeth aren't symmetrical, her hairline is actually a little lopsided, and one of her eyelids is slightly heavier than the other. But in the poll, she still ranked as a really attractive face. So let's overlay the rule of fifths on the face and you'll start to see why. The middle three thirds of her face align almost perfectly with our rule, where her eyes are the same width and her nose is proportionally in the middle, even though it's not entirely symmetrical. The outside proportions of her head also line up almost perfectly with the same fifths division. Same goes with this face, face 18B, which ranked an entire point higher when unsymmetricized. You can see that the rule of fifths also fares really well here, with those fifths extremely equal all the way across. And this model ranked extremely highly in our poll on attractiveness. Compare this face to when we do make her symmetrical and all of a sudden something looks off. Her face feels narrow, her features feel crowded, it's like there's too much going on on not enough facial area. More symmetrical, but numerically less attractive. We can also apply the rule of thirds to these faces and get the same great results. Our top ranker, face three, again nails this, with almost 100% equal dispersion across the thirds of the face. This top raider stock 2A also had excellently proportioned thirds, making the face appear balanced and approachable. But what about the faces that ranked lower on the poll? Did they obey the same rules? Overall, they rated much lower on both the rules relative to our attractive counterparts. This poor dude, face 13, had the unfortunate distinction of being one of the lowest rankers in the poll. At first glance, he seems like a totally average guy, but carving him up into five slices like a loaf of bread, you can see that one eye is longer than the other and his ears stick out even past the angle of his face. You saw that instinctively when you rated him a three out of 10 in your survey. Whew, told you you guys were brutal. For the rule of thirds, some, like face 45, had foreheads that were disproportionately large compared to the middle third of the face. Or in the case of our fellow from last time, face 13, a huge chin relative to a kind of weak forehead and a long middle of the face, resulting in scores 50% lower than the attractive faces. But what about faces that society has collectively deemed very attractive? I took a look at eight of the official sexiest people alive, according to the vintage outlet known as a magazine. Specifically, I looked at People and FHM, or For Him Magazine. Very creative names there. But it did give me an official list of people to look at and see if Hollywood stars can even live up to these very standards. And the answer is mostly yes. For the men, we tested Chris Evans, Michael B. Jordan, Harrison Ford, and Idris Elba. For the women, we looked at Rihanna, Scarlett Johansson, Gal Gadot, and Halle Berry. Right away, we can see that not everyone is completely even on both sides of their face. Chris Evans's left eye 
eye is slightly more closed than his right. ScarJo smiles, a little bit lopsided, and Harrison Ford is absolutely famous for his crooked nose and uneven grin. However, when I measured everything out, they all fared much better with our other rules, especially the women. All the women but Rihanna passed the rule of thirds, as did all the men, with the exception of Harrison Ford. When it came to the rule of fifths, again, the women tended to fare better. Well, none of our men actually passed this one. Some of them were certainly close, but funny thing that I'm noticing here, when I line up all of the sexiest men versus women, the standard for symmetry is a little bit wonky. Women on this list seem to fall much more within these rules than all of our most beautiful men, who wind up being a bit lopsided. Some tells me that's gonna be a full episode on another day. I mean, just take a look at my sexiest man alive, Markiplier. Also failed to hit the ratios, but you can't tell me that a man who broke the internet multiple times, including taking down only fans in the name of charity, is unattractive. You can go ahead and try, but one, you're wrong, and two, it is your funeral, my friend. And just to show that this is all survey results and measurements, you can also see that my face, both symmetrical and non-symmetrical, doesn't fare that well. My eyes are technically too wide for my face, my ears stick out too far on either side of my head, and my smile skews to one side. Same goes for the rule of thirds. There, no amount of symmetry is gonna help the fact that either my forehead is too small or my chin is too big. So at the end of the day, the science is in. You are not just one mirror flip away from being attractive. For better or worse, all of our attractiveness depends on a heck of a lot more than that. You might be hitting the rule of fifths head on, but not quite hitting the rule of thirds. You might be asymmetrical, but have a perfectly proportioned nose based on all these other measurements. We've proven with math that TikTok can't tell you whether you're attractive or not. So if you see a filter that says it can, look under the hood. See if they're playing with science or just playing with your emotions. And hey, if you do actually want to test your own face against the math of these proportions, there are analyzers that can do exactly that. The most accurate ones actually require you to bust out a ruler and measure bits of your face to see how many centimeters long your nose is or how many centimeters apart your eyeballs are, which is certainly a little weird, but hey, you can do it. Spoiler alert though, you, just like me, probably won't meet a mathematician's formula for beauty, but your face and the math behind it are perfect just the way they are. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp. And hey, speaking of looks, if you're looking to debunk more beauty conspiracies, click right here to watch our episode pulling back the curtain on the history of why women's pockets are so small. I promise you the secrets are so big, you won't be able to fit them into the pocket of a pair of Junko jeans. Go ahead, click the video right now. I'll see you on the other side. We got five new episodes today. Binge watch, baby!